What's up, loves, and welcome back to another Bible study with me. So last week, we were reading chapters 1 and 2 of Matthew, and we're going to be reading two chapters every single week for Bible study with me. And basically, in the last two chapters, I will list here the key points that we read about. And so if you're someone who definitely didn't see that video, I will also have that link down below and at the end of the video. But here on the side, you'll be seeing the key points that happened in that chapter. God, I ask, Lord, that your presence will be felt here with each and every person that clicks on this video, God, that they will be able to join me, God, in unity for us to read your word, God, and to uh, be edified through your word and to learn your character, to learn your history, my God, and just that we will be able to be joined virtually, God, through this Bible study to speak about you, to learn about you, Lord. I ask that you would place the words that you want me to say, that you would place those words on my tongue, Father, so that they would come out the way you want them to come out, Lord. And this is spirit-led, God. I want you to lead this in each and every Bible study, each and every teaching, each and every word that ever comes out of my mouth about you. I pray, God, that it will be through you, God, and all about you and from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and get started and I'm just hopping right into it because we have some chapters to get through when it comes to the book of Matthew. And so I want to make sure that we're rolling the ball here. But first, really quickly, if you're new here, my name is Erica. I create Christian content. I love Jesus. I love the word. I live for Jesus. And so if you are someone who needs like a virtual brother and sister to keep you motivated, to give you tips, to give you the word of God, to speak life into you, definitely follow, subscribe. Also, I do take prayer requests. There will be a link at the bottom of every single description box of my videos where you guys can click and you guys can send me prayer requests or private messages, questions, anything like that that you don't want public. Definitely um, on there, you can reach me throughout that way. I'm still having a little bit of trouble using this mic. It's actually new also and I'm just having trouble. So if the audio is a little bit off in certain clips, at the beginning i'm so sorry i'm just literally trying to figure out how to use the mic and trial and error right so we're gonna get started okay so matthew chapter 3 it says john the baptist prepares the way in those days john the baptist came preaching in the wilderness of judea and saying repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near this is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Verse four, John's clothes were made of camel's hair and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warn you to flee from the coming wrath? Verse 8, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And we know that keeping with repentance is something that believers, even believers are encouraged to do because we're, we're always going to be in this fleshly body until we go with Christ, right? So in a sense, our fleshly nature always wants to do things that are not of God. And that's why we have to keep with keep being filled with the spirit and, and, and walk in the spirit, right? So that way we will be able to be righteous and, and to continue doing the good deeds and the good things of the Lord and not let our flesh take over. And so produce fruit. He's telling them produce fruit, keeping with repentance. So repent often every day. Um, keep that heart of repentance and of turning away from sin. Verse nine, pray and do not think you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Mm, this is sounding a little bit like um, 
the book of I think it's Ephesians where it talks about that or Romans verse 11 I baptize you with water for repentance but after me comes one who is more powerful than I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So right here, he's actually talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which when you are a born again Christian, it literally means you have experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is one of those moments that you will remember for the rest of your life. The baptism of the Holy Spirit happens one time, but we can be and will be continually filled with the Spirit of God on a daily basis. Um, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit is something that happens for every believer. If it hasn't happened for you, definitely keep praying for that. Keep seeking the Lord for that and it will happen for you. But that's what he's talking about here. And then verse 12 tells us his winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came to Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? And Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. So he's letting them know to fulfill all righteousness, this is what needs to happen. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love with him. I am well pleased. Amen. How beautiful. How beautiful. Okay, Matthew chapter 4. And so in that last verse, we, we saw Jesus getting baptized. Holy Spirit, um, the Spirit of God just descending like a dove. Just so beautiful, so powerful. And it's just amazing how when you look at things through the way that they happened in the Bible, you look at these moments and you're just like, wow, this is just so precious. Like just imagine being there, how amazing that would have been to experience, right? Okay, so Jesus tested in the wilderness. Verse 1. We're on chapter 4 now. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, For it is written... Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. So here he is trying to quote scripture. Here the devil is, to be exact, trying to quote scripture to Jesus, to God himself, right? Like, who do you think you are? Trying to quote scripture to him to get him to do a thing and um, to basically get him to prove himself. Oh, prove that you're God by doing this. Prove that you have all the power and that you have all of the authority and etc. And so he was trying to knock Jesus out off of his game. And so this is what Jesus replied. And then also what I was trying to say with that too is how he was trying to say, you know, um, for it is written, if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up. So he's trying to basically say, like, use the word, like say, oh, for it is written, like the angels will come and lift you up with their hands. Right. And so he's trying to test Jesus himself, the audacity. Right. So verse seven tells us Jesus answered him. It is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. 
Do not put the Lord your God to the test. God will come through when he needs to come through. God doesn't come through when you try to test him. Okay, so that is also written, Jesus says. Verse 8 says again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said. You will bow down and worship me. Oh, if you will bow down and worship me. Verse 10, Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And this is what this is what's happening with a lot of people nowadays, guys, especially celebrities. They're being offered the world. They're being offered money. They're being offered fame, all of these things in order to denounce Jesus Christ, in order to reject Jesus Christ, in order to create all of this content, blaspheming Jesus Christ. They have to literally reject Christ. And if they do that, and if they, they, they worship Satan and they worship the devil and evil things, then the devil gives them fame or money or whatever the case may be, right? And so here is the devil trying to tempt Jesus through the same exact type of situation. And this is what, this is the perfect response. This should be the response of every believer when we are tempted with vanities of this world, when we are tempted with the things of this world and to worship other things in this world. It says, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. That is just an amazing, Jesus just quoting scripture back to him. This is a beautiful conversation right here because you have the aggressor, you have the devil who is trying to pounce on Jesus at this moment and get him to cave in. And then you have Jesus showing us this is how you guys should be responding to the devil and to the to the um the schemes of the devil or even the requests that come from the devil and from his demons. And and this is how you guys should be responding. Serve the Lord your God only. And I do believe that the Bible was written perfectly also because obviously Jesus knew that this would be our rule book. And so for us to be able to mimic the way Jesus responded, the way Jesus acted, right? His character. So this is beautiful right here. A lot of us need to start saying no to money, no to certain things, no no to these things that can easily become idols and say, for I'm going to worship the Lord my God only. I'm not going to worship money. I'm not going to worship my job. I'm not going to put those things first and idolize them. The Bible says to serve the Lord your God only. And we can take a lot of these things that Jesus said and apply them. And it's just so beautiful how we can grasp that in the word of God. So Jesus begins to preach. Verse 12, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew from Galilee, leaving Nazareth. He went and lived in, in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun, of Zebulun and Naptil, Naptili, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Verse 15, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali. The way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness, having, have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Verse 17, from that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As Jesus was walking beside the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon Two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. I just want you guys to picture this right now. They left the boats and followed them, followed Jesus. An unknown man, they didn't know Jesus, so they left the familiar to go to the unfamiliar. That's the first thing I want to point out. This is beautiful because most of the time, 
Actually, 100% of the time, that's literally what we have to do to follow Christ. We have to leave the familiar, which is sin, sinful deeds that we used to do, our sinful nature. And we have to go to the unfamiliar, right? There's always this bridge that we have to cross. And when everyone, you know, obviously accepts the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they go through a crossing point where they're crossing, where they're leaving their old life. They're leaving what's familiar and they're going to what's unfamiliar, which is serving God. And as you keep serving God, then you gain experience and you gain knowledge and you gain all of the things that you need to put into your toolbox. Right. Um, And so I, I find that that's just beautiful, a beautiful depiction on how these men were fishing. He was even with his father. It says James, the son of Zebedee and his brother, John, they were with his with the father and they left the father and they followed Jesus. Verse 23, Jesus heals the sick. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among people. News about him spread all over Syria and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures and the paralyzed. And he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, um, Jerusalem, Judea and region across the Jordan followed him. So Jesus was making his mark. Jesus was going around healing the sick, healing demon possessed people, delivering demon possessed people. He was going around um, doing all of these beautiful miracles and these beautiful signs. Um, And there was a time when Jesus wanted to be concealed. It wasn't his time to come out yet as the Messiah. God had a timeline. God knows what he was doing. He had a timeline. So he needed to make sure that he didn't get crucified before the time. So he had a strategic plan and strategic things to do on earth. But I know we're going to get to it later on in Matthew. I tend to kind of like talk about things that are going to come because it's just when you think about the word of God and when this talks about how Jesus was going out and performing all these miracles and all these things, we look at Jesus as you know, some people look at Jesus as, well, look at your God, you know, your God is, is someone who sends people to hell or he allows evil or he allows wicked. No, our God allows free will. And because of that free will, because we are of sinful nature, people do evil things through that free will. Because our God does not want robots serving him. Our God wants us to die to self and to literally live by the word and to serve him. That's what we were created to do was to serve God. What happens is, is that God doesn't allow things, but he allows free will. And then humans decide what they do with that free will. But it's just beautiful depicting and and just picturing this here because it's like the Lord is also a healer. He is also, he came to deliver. He came to set you free. So he's not a God that's just like, here, here's this Bible, abide by all these rules and I'm just going to leave you, you know, I'm going to leave you stranded, right? No, no. God is a God who's going to walk you through that thing. He's going to deliver you. He's going to heal you. He's going to comfort you. I mean, God literally gives us the Holy Spirit, right? So we have God to help us through this walk. So our God is a miracle worker. Our God is all of these beautiful things and he's also our savior. And he requires certain things from us. Our rule book is the Bible. And so you wanna learn how to live, read the Bible more. A true Christian, a victorious Christian is in their word daily. I'm gonna say it again. A victorious Christian is in their word daily because it's our rule book. How can you buy a new piece of furniture or even a new car and not look at the manual? How can you see the different the different tweaks and the different uh, characteristics of that thing or how to put that thing together? If you're talking about furniture here, how can you see that or how can you know that if you don't read the manual, if you don't read the extru- the instruction guide? The same with being a believer. If we don't read our word, the word of God, which is a living word, it's sharper than any two edged sword. We don't read the word of God. We are going to be tossed to and from. We're not our, our words are not going to be seasoned with salt. 
because you you don't have the word of God in you. The Holy Spirit doesn't have anything to pull from. And I don't know why I'm going here, but the word of God is so important to know and to read, guys. So important. And this is why I do these Bible studies. Not because I want to call myself a teacher or not because I want to be on social media just because. I love the word of God and I know how difficult it was for me before I was baptized with the Holy Spirit to get into the word. It was a literal fight. The devil always had me fighting to spend time with God. I would never spend time with God and I was lukewarm. And when I crossed that bridge, right, I realized I know a lot of other people are dealing with this. And you know what? That's why I come on here and I do these Bible studies because at least I am helping someone to like I, I can allow myself to be used by God. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I may not say everything right. I may not say everything perfectly. But what I do allow is for the Holy Spirit to work in through what I am talking about and what I am um, reading. And so I come on here to learn with you guys. I come on here because God literally talks to me. Even if I've read a verse three, four, five times, God literally still talks to me in different ways. That's how powerful the word of God is. You can reread the word of God and get a totally different outlook that you did before. And it can speak to your situation. And I want you guys to understand. And I think this is it with chapter four. Yeah, we're done with chapter four here. Um, so I want you guys to understand, like now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of the book of Matthew. Jesus is now healing. He is now, um, he is now delivering demon possessed people, which was one of those things where, um, Nicodemus actually, you guys are going to see, I think later on in the book of Matthew, Nicodemus actually was struggling to, um, to deliver, uh, this woman from, the demonic possession that she was under and so jesus doing these things is going to start um a lot of issues in this place you know what i'm saying it's going to start a lot of issues and we're going to see how everything's going to come about and then up to his crucifixion um but i'm glad that we are already getting into where jesus was healing jesus was delivering jesus was um just doing the do he was doing the works doing the miracles right and he was healing people with seizures and various diseases, um, the lepers and all of those things. And now it's going to get it's 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 been getting spicy, but I'm really excited for the build up for these next coming weeks. And so if you like this Bible study, definitely give me a thumbs up, guys. This will actually help my video um, get out there so that more people can join me on these Bible studies. And um, that's basically the end of chapter four. So let me pray for you guys. And um, if you have any questions, hey, leave them down below. I always answer questions, anything that maybe you guys think I could do better anything like that I'm down for I'm not easily offended at least I'm not I'm trying not to be right because the Bible tells us don't be easily offended so I'm trying not to be easily offended so I'll take constructive criticism and all of that just please say things in love guys please say things in love it's all like the character behind how you say things okay so uh let me pray for you guys lord i thank you so much for your word god i thank you god that each and every day as we pray to you as we give you time lord you are just pleased god you are you are just pleased lord because we are trying lord we are in your word god and we're trying to understand your character we're trying to understand how things happened in the past god and we're trying to learn new things from your word even if we read it multiple times, God, and you are you are pleased with that, Lord. And so, God, I ask that you would bless and you would um, cover each and every viewer right now in the name of Jesus, God, that they will be able to move forward and continue to join Bible studies, whether it be mine or Bible studies with themselves, God, to understand your character, to seek you more, Jesus, and that your power and anointing will be over their life in Jesus' name amen. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this Bible study. I will see you guys next Wednesday at 7 p.m. for uh, chapters 5 and 6. Bye guys.